I know I'm fine, but the money makes me handsomer. Walk around smelling like a come up in the ass. You too, what's up? What's up, you too? What's going on? Ah, been hearing a lot of talk about my eagles out there, man. I don't know why. We're 5 and 0. Oh. 5 and 0. Oh. There's too much There's 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 31 other teams in the NFL that they get that that could be talked about. Te- especially teams that are losing. Broncos. Cowboys. You know what I mean? Just just to throw a few teams out there. But it's like the Eagles is like is like the headline everywhere. But it's not good headlines. It's more negative stuff than positive. And then this whole quarterback sneak, you know, the brotherly shove. I'm hearing the NFL may ban it. Other teams are doing it. But not as effective. I'm talking to you, Dallas Cowboys. Um, yeah, like, like, what's, like, what's, like, what's up? And now we got the Jets talking? The Jets. Are you serious? Are you serious? Man, come on. Come on. Don't let, you know, don't let that, you know, Bronco win. Got y'all feeling like y'all can go up against the number one team in the NFL. I know San Francisco was undefeated, but San Francisco ain't getting talked about like Philly. San Francisco ain't doing things that Philly's doing that other teams is trying to do, but can't. And the fact that they can't do it. They want to ban it. Nah, nah, nah. So, we got to get in that ass. I felt we were going to go into New York, humble, 5-0, and oh, automatic dub. But we going to just take it easy. We know they rebuilding. You know, we know they upset that Aaron Rodgers. Got hurt. You know. We're going to take it easy on him. But since the head coach want to bump his gums. And he want to. You know. He want to. He want to talk about. They can stop it. Then the other Jets coach talking about. You know. It's like we got a rugby coach. You know what I'm saying out there. Like bruh. They're trying to find all kinds of things and ways. To try to. Figure out this Philly dynamic. But they can't. So they're going to turn to the commission. They're going to turn to the NFL and be like, hey, can y'all ban that, please? Can y'all ban that brotherly shove? Can y'all ban it? But all that's going to do is shoot everybody else in the foot because there's going to be those times, those fourth and ones, fourth and inches. And that's when that, you know, that quarterback sneak is going to come in handy. But you ain't going to be able to do it because it'll be banned. I say, not just because I'm a Philly fan, but I say, don't ban it, get better. How about that? Don't ban it, get better. That's it. We got some injuries. Fletcher Cox is back. Now, uh, my my other big boy, uh, my other guy, he's 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 not down. He's not down. He's just you know, probably probably a little a little little crampy. They said it was his ankle. You know, they said it was his ankle, but I just think he can just take this, take, take that night off, rest his ankle. 
Because we got we got big Jordan Davis, bro. We got big Jordan Davis. So when one goes down, the next one steps up. At least as far as the defensive line. Now the DBs, we do need help with the DBs. You know, Darius Slay is another one. He's out. He's out. So that means next man up. Y'all know how that football, how this football game go. Next man up. Our DBs has been playing pretty soft, according to me. Just my opinion. They've been playing pretty soft, you know, and the safeties too. So hopefully we tighten up in the secondary. But as far as our defensive line and our backers, we good. We solid. But the offense, you know, they, you know, they, they just took shots at my boy Jalen, man. Like, they took shots at my boy Jalen. And I don't know if the just thought that we were going to just sit down and just take that. Like, nah, we took that personal. So Fletcher Cox is, you know, he's saying this, oh, it's personal. Because now you got us thinking that y'all finna try to intentionally kiss Jalen Hurts 11 times. Mm. We gonna see. We gonna see. We got to talk about Quez Watkins. Quiz. Last year, bro, you cost us two games. Two. This year, bro, you haven't been, I haven't been seeing nothing from you. They say you was a little banged up. Okay. But last week, you know, like Jalen Hurts hit you, bro, wide open. And you dropped it. And then that's when they put Zacchaeus up in there. And he came in with some pretty nice catches. So, Mr. Watkins, yo, man, um, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I like you. You a good player. But you falling off, bro. You're really falling off. Maybe we should, maybe we should, you know... Philly, maybe Philly should, instead of going deep with you, maybe we should get you warmed up and hitting you like, you know, 5, 10, maybe 15 yard passes to get you warmed up in the game and then go ahead and, you know, get you one. That's just me. That's just me. Um... But, yeah, man, there's a lot of talk, a lot of talk about Philly, man. A lot of talk. Everybody's trying to figure, just figure Philly out, and they can't. So, um, yeah, let's just get to this video and see what, what, what else, what else is wrong. Well, we got some bad news with Jalen Carr popping up on the injury report and not looking likely that he'll play on Sunday. Although, thankfully, Fletcher Cox is back and he has a message for Jets head coach Robert Sala. Sidney Brown says he's playing and there's an increasing chance it'll be at safety. Plus, the Birds signed a linebacker okay. and why N'Kobe Dean should get the starting job back. But first, let's run it. Guys, all right, let's start with the news that the Eagles have officially signed linebacker Brandon Smith to the practice oh, squad after working else? him out a couple weeks ago. And yes, this is the dude I talked about in the past because as most is of us know, Penn Smith played at Penn, Penn State? State and was a five-star recruit out of high school. So when you combine that with his big hitting six foot three, 240 pound frame, there's mm. a lot of potential in this move. Oh yeah, and the guy also ran a four five two at the 2022 combine. Of course, I wouldn't expect to see any kind of immediate contribution since after all, that's cool. See, when they be listening, when they be, when they be, you know, when they be at the combine and they be talking about, oh, he's 6'6", 220, 230, he runs a 4'4", four, 4'5", four, four, all that sounds good. 
But how big is that fight in them? We need dogs out here in Philly. We need dogs out here. I'll give you an example. AJ Brown. We all know AJ Brown. He isn't the fastest. You know, he isn't he isn't the fastest receiver. And AJ Brown isn't, you know, the swiftiest receiver. Meaning, you know, can he make like real good good cuts? You know what I'm saying? That a t t for a separation between him and the in the corner. You know, but AJ Brown, he's strong, he's durable, he's smart, he got great awareness, you know, and 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 he's he's a dog. When he get the ball, he's already automatically ready to, you know, stiff on like two or three people, try to run over, you know, one or two people. Already. And then you got a raw receiver like, you know, DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf is is I think he is he what was six four, six five? I'm not too sure. But DK Metcalf is strong. But how much of DK Metcalf have you heard have you heard of? My point exactly. Not saying that DK Metcalf isn't a good receiver, because DK Metcalf is a is a is a good receiver. He is a good receiver. But right now he ain't playing like, like he that like he a dog. He ain't playing like he, like he about that. You know. That battle last week. AJ Brown, with the with the corners. In uh, in, in LA. He let him know I'm AJ Brown. Y'all gonna have to do a whole hell of a lot more. Then double team me because single coverage ain't getting it. And double teaming them wasn't getting it either. But that's what I mean by, you know, all the attributes can sound good. But if he, if they ain't got that fight in them, they just they just look good on paper. Well, the 22-year-old is a former fourth-round pick by the Carolina Panthers, which clearly didn't work out for them to cut him so quickly. However, you get mm. him with this unit with all the physical tools he has, and it wouldn't surprise me if he makes some contributions next season. He's good. With my help, he could be the best. Okay, I don't know about the best, although as we know, Philly's been able to hit on a couple linebackers recently that not every team was high on. The the most recent and obvious one being Nicholas Morrow, who through five weeks in the NFL season ranks as the number three linebacker in defensive grade, number mm. five in tackling grade, and number 12 in coverage grade. And heck, let's not forget the other linebacker, Zach Cunningham, who's also played really well and is tied for the team lead in tackles, having made some significant plays for Sean Desai's defense. However, as you're very aware of by now, N'Kobe Dean's 21-day practice window to return from IR has been open, with a former mm. first-rounder okay. being reps in practice, and based on all reports from the media so far, Far, he's looked pretty solid, meaning a return to the starting lineup is likely coming soon. So that's a good thing, right? Well, I initially thought so. However, judging by several comments, it seems like there's quite a few that agree with Tone to Shields, who said, if you upset what's going on between Nicholas Morrow and Zach Cunningham, that could potentially set back that linebacking core. Okay, I understand that line of know. thinking, but I'm with head coach Nick Sirianni, who would rather have number 17 on the field. He's a football junkie. He's always, he's always trying to be around it. Um, you know, you saw that he was at the game. Sometimes it's not all, you don't always take guys to the to the away games. He really wanted to be there. Uh, he was great on the sideline. Uh, obviously, we'd rather have him on the field, um, but he was great on the sideline with his teammates uh, saying what he saw. Um, and so he, you know, I thought the way he went about his, his time off, again, we'll see what's going on uh, as the week progresses, but the way he went about his time off was really continuing to try to grow and get better. Um, you just can't keep him out of the building and can't keep him off the out of the film room. Did anyone Nick know what he's talking about? You know what I mean? Nick Nick and Howie, them two, I like their relationship. Their relationship is real, real um it's real um you know they they know what they doing. They let each other know exactly what they doing, they let each other know like um the players, players that may need to be sit down, players that need more developing, players that need more more rest, you know, and then that, that and again, you know, that next man up, that player that that is or could possibly be that next man up, 
So I think when with Nick is saying, you know, with Nicobe Dean, he possibly could be that next man up, you know, or he was already that man before he, you know, just coming off of uh coming off of his injury. So uh I trust I trust I trust Sirianni and his decision making. I think they're gonna make a good decision. I think they're gonna make a real great decision when it comes to the linebacker just the, the linebacker position. One notice Nick slipped there at the end and try to say something else. It sounded like he wanted to say keep him off the field. Sorry, maybe that's the conspiracist in me. Because the head coach didn't commit on anything with Dean in order to maintain a competitive advantage. Except if you buy into the practice clips and notes, nicobe has been getting first team reps with Zach mm. Cunningham while Nicholas Morrow was with Christian Ellis for the bulk of the drills, so maybe that means something. Plus, shout out to Philly Mike of the Philly Talk podcast who shared an anonymous source told him the birds plan to start nicobe over Morrow. Yet I'm curious who that source See? could be. Possibly rookie Nolan Smith since the Philly Dog's been repping Mike's Philly Dog hats and can't wait to have his brother back out there. I think he's excited, man. I just can't wait to get my dog back. And you just know, man, you just feel... See what I'm saying? Philly... We got dogs out here, bro. We got dogs out here. We got dogs out here. All them attributes is great. They're helpful. But that size of that dog in you, that's what's going to win these games. That's, that's what's keeping us undefeated. Feel his energy when he out there. And even on the sideline, you feel his energy. I know where he was. I was just there a couple months ago, mm -hmm. and he just itching to get back. I'm happy for him to get back. You can just tell it means more to these guys because Dean said it's all he knows, saying, I've never missed a game ever. Since the beginning, I've never missed a game in my life, but I've stayed in the building and been in every single meeting. It's all I know. This is a defense I'm a part of, and I feel like it's my job to be here. All right, this is why I've said the writing's on the wall with Kobe, who was able to perform in drills while testing out the foot on Wednesday and get in some semi-live team action today. So when asked if he feels 100%, Dean That's smiled him. and said, I'm about there. And another fellow Philly dog, Jordan Davis, yeah, took it see, a step that further. That's okay, what I was college, about. I've seen Nicole miss a game or Nicole like miss something like to this extent. Um, so just seeing him like, you know, just trying to be out there. I mean, he loves this thing. He loves the game. So it's great to see him. It's great to see him. And it's great to see his recovery and his progress. And he's coming back this week, I believe. So, um, you know, that's just him. That's what he wants to do. He wants to be with us. He wants to share. I mean, shoot, if it came down to it, I want to do the same thing. So, um, you know, having the Kobe and just seeing him go through his progressions, you know, just seeing him face this adversity in his life, um, definitely excited for him. Brooke, is that Jalen Carter surprisingly missed practice today, popping up on the injury report with an ankle injury after being perfectly fine on Wednesday? I don't have to tell you, but that's yeah. not ideal. I'm assuming that had something to do with Wednesday's practice, and hopefully he can make a speedy recovery. But before you go jumping that's not out gonna, window, that's not hurt to paint the too picture bad, as a glass half full, at least it's an ankle, meaning there's a better chance. And fortunately, Fletcher Cox was a full participant, so should be able to go on Sunday. See? Plus, with it being Zach Wilson we're going up against, the defense should still have plenty of opportunities, even if the bread man can't go. And exactly. Fletch has a plan for the Jets' running game. Very solid in particular. I mean, he's a pretty explosive back. Uh, what's, the, what's the key? Uh, making sure that he stays contained. You got to go kiss him 11 times. <laughs> Put 11 helmets on I mean, how perfect is that? By the way, in case you don't get the reference, Fletch was responding to Jets coach Robert Sala's comments yeah. on how they plan to stop the brother. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Really hold, on. hold on. See, this is, this, is, this, is, this is what I was saying before. We were going to come in humble. We know they're having a bad season. We know they don't have as many weapons as we have. We know we know who we're going up against. There's no need to really go out there and really play hard. You feel what I'm saying? But still play. But then when this guy said what he said, and not just him, the, the other coaches. Well, I think he was a defensive coach. When he said what he said, I'm like, put some respect on Philly's name, bro. Put some respect on Philly's name. Like, like that's what I'm saying. Like, the league is talking as if Philly, as if we're, we're not, as if we're not that. As if we won't come in your house and punch you in your fucking mouth. I don't understand, bro. How do you criticize an undefeated team? They're talking about our offense, our defense, our special team. 
specific players on offense, specific players on defense, and specific players on special teams. They're talking about banning the brotherly shove. When that shit's been done since I've been watching football, just not as effective as Philly is doing it. Now they want to ban it. This is what happens when you play your little brother at a game and he just can't beat you. So in order for him to feel better about himself, he unplugs the TV. He unplugs the game. That's what they do. Crying. They want to go holler at mama. He's cheating. They're cheating. How am I cheating when it's a part of the game? How am I cheating when what I'm doing is a part of the game? And now you want to take it away from me? But not knowing that when you take it away from the way, the way that you're trying to take it away from me, you're also taking it away from yourself, from you to not even doing it. That's how sore losers, you know what I'm saying, continue to lose. That's how sore losers are. Good at it, and it feels like the quarterback is wearing a bulletproof vest when you look at him. He's got a look lot of heading out, but, uh, even the pads, bro. We're gonna do our best to try to stop it, and you know, the quarterback's got his. They, and they do a lot of stuff off it too. They got reverses, they got pop passes, they got stretch plays. They, they do a lot, so you got to be sound, you got to be disciplined. Uh, so what we'll they are paying too close attention to us, they're like writing every little thing down that we do. So a loser. Oh, we'll, we'll do our best in that regard, and, but if the quarterback carries the ball, we got to give him 11 kisses. But they got a quarterback who's super strong uh, in terms of creating leverage. Uh, like I said, he, I don't think he feels pain when he gets hit, um, even though we're going to try legally. Legally. Okay. Yo, bruh, bruh, like, all right, look, me as an ex- you know, in high school, I played a little bit of semi-pro. But me as a ex-football player, and if I was to hear, if I was to hear my opponent or anyone on on the opposite side talking about me or a fellow teammate, I would I would definitely take that personally. You feel me? I would definitely take that personally. Like, what you mean you, 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 y'all want to kiss my quarterback 11 times? Why are you talking about his padding? Why do you feel that he don't feel pain when he get hit? Is that the reason why for the past five games, every time people get a hand on Jalen, they're trying to twist his neck, twisting his leg, you know? They're doing everything in their power to hurt him to the point where they're trying to like, I feel like that's almost like trying to end this man's career. Especially when they say legally, but they really mean like, come on, football, ex-football players, y'all know. Y'all know locker room talk. He gonna say legally for the fans out there and for the media. But in the locker room, they're like, yeah, like, Twist his ankle up. I'm trying to rip his head off. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, for real. If we're gonna lose this game, we're not gonna go. With, we're not gonna go out without a fight, and that's the reason why I said we need dogs out there. We need dogs out there. So it's good that Fletcher Cox took it personal. Because what they got to understand is your number one quarterback is gone. Y'all on quarterback number two, New York Jets. Y'all on quarterback number two. So that just means for a defense, the defensive line, really, we're going to go kiss your quarterback. We're going to go kiss your number two quarterback. And we're going to kiss him 11 times. We're going to see if he feel pain under 
his pads. As a Philly fan, I take that personal. But New York also has their own injury problems since they'll already be without starting right tackle Elijah Vera Tuck. They talking all this damn head. And they hurt and they and they hurt themselves. Not only, not only, not only are they fucking losing, but they're also fragile. They're hurt. And they got the nerve to This is some baby brother shit right here. I want Philly to come up in New York and beat the shit out of these Jets. For real. I want every time they little baby, their number two quarterback, hike the ball. I want Fletcher Cox and Jordan Davis to be right there in his face. And sandwich his ass. And then let number three come on out to the field. They're going to have to go put Aaron Rodgers' ass back in some in some pads. Because we're going to eat his ass up. We finna kick their ass. Tucker, who was placed on injured reserve after rupturing his Achilles tendon. And then starting left tackle, Makai Becton has been limited in practice with a knee injury. Plus, starting <laughs> cornerback DJ Reed is still trying to come back from a concussion. So there you go. Look, it's the NFL, so injuries are gonna happen. Yet I know it feels worse when there's a major surprise pop up like this, but we'll be fine. Thankfully, as we already know, we've got one of the deepest D lines in the league, so I trust the guys to figure it out. How are y'all feeling though? Any extra concerns ahead of the game, especially given the injury update? Go. Man. I got a prediction. I got a prediction. Eagles are going to win. We all know that. And we're going to win by... I don't know. 40. 40 points. The Jets may... The Jets, I, I predict this is the score. This should be the score. This is my prediction. This is my prediction. 42-10. That's going to be the score. 42-10. to 10. I predict A.J. Brown is going to get seven catches. Seven catches, two touchdowns. Devontae Smith, I predict maybe eight, nine catches. And that's because he didn't get one last week. So they're going to make that up. And out of all those catches, he may get Two touchdowns. Swift get a touchdown and you know, you know Jake Elliott, he gonna get he gonna get six kicking the ball some you know what I'm saying somewhere on the field. That's my predictions. You know, Philly gonna beat them 42 to 10 and and send them on their way. They ain't gonna be nothing else said. Send their ass on their way. Six and zero. Oh. Y'all got to leave Philly alone, man. Y'all got to leave Philly alone. We just playing good ball right now. We playing great ball right now. And we're and and, and and don't let us don't let us get hot and find a rhythm. Meaning we 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 getting hot by putting players it in a in a good positions for them to shine. Offensively and defensively. Then the league going to be really in trouble. Then the league's really in trouble. So, 
if you like the video, hit that subscribe button, please. Please, please, please. Get me out there. You know. Uh, hit that like button. Definitely comment. Let me know what y'all think, man. Let me know what y'all think about how the league is treating the Eagles right now. Let me know what y'all think about uh, how the team is look. My fellow Eagle fans, let me know how y'all liking the team. You know, what are y'all seeing that we could be uh, strong, stronger at and where we're just like dominant at? We already know we dominate for the brotherly shove. They're, <laughs> people want it banned, you know. But let me know what y'all think, man. Selly Savage, man. I'm out. Peace. I know I'm fine, but the money makes me handsomer. Walk around smelling like a come up in the answer for her problems, but I'm not him. I don't mind it.